In this video I continue the short series on Python namespaces and in this video I look at multiple namespaces in Python. In the previous three videos we have seen that a namespace is a system that attempts to ensure that all names in a program are unique and can be used without any conflict. We have also seen that namespaces in Python are implemented as dictionaries. And within these dictionaries there is a name to object mapping with the names as keys and the objects as values. Consider this computer program we can see there are three variables and if we look to the dictionary that represents the name to object mapping for this computer program it looks as you can see here. This program statement gives us this entry in the dictionary where this is the identifier that's mapped to this object which has the value of 5. This program statement gives us this entry in the dictionary and this program statement gives us this entry. And if you look at the values you can see this one is an integer, this one is a float and this one is a string. And these here are the names of the variables that appear in the computer program as you can see here. This computer program is more or less the same as the one we saw on the last slide, the difference being I've added this program statement here. And what this statement will do is give us the following output. And what we're looking at here is the names that exist in the namespace for the computer program here. If we consider this computer program, you can see it's only got the one statement and it's the statement that appeared here in this program. So here what you can see, I've deleted the three program statements shown here. And if we look at the output from this program, what we can see is this. So we can see that these names here must have been placed there by Python because if you look at the program, there's nothing else included in this code. Whereas if you look up here, you can see that I have got these names. And of course, these names are the names of the variables that I used in this code, as you can see here. Now, of course, what I've just described is a repetition of what you've seen in the previous videos in this short series on Python namespaces. But I thought it was important that I reminded you at the beginning of this video. Within a Python program, there can be multiple namespaces with a separate dictionary for each namespace. Let's consider some examples of namespaces. We can have a local namespace, a global namespace and a built-in namespace. For the rest of this video, I'm going to consider the local namespace. It consists of local names inside a function. The namespace is created when a function is called it only lasts until the function executes its return statement. We will consider this program to enable us to look at the local namespace. Let's first of all consider the runtime for this computer program. This is the first program statement that will execute and first underscore number is assigned 5. This then executes, second underscore number is assigned 7 and then this line will execute where this is a call to this function and what we have here stored within this variable is 5 and that 5 will appear here and this will have 7 within it. Second underscore number is bound to the integer object 7 if you want to give the full description and that will appear here and on this line we add what's in number underscore 1 to what's in number underscore 2 which gives us 12 and that value of 12 is assigned to result. So result is the name that's bound to the integer object that holds 12. And what this line will do is return the result, return the 12, which is then assigned to here. So sum underscore of underscore numbers will be bound to the integer 12. And what this line does is simply print out the 12. And we can see that in the runtime here. Now I've taken the program that I've just discussed and I've added this line here and if we look to the runtime for this computer program what we're going to see output is the following and this here is the 12 that was printed by this line and of course this line prints this lot which is the namespace. The names that I am interested in are these here which I'm going to show in a bigger font as you can see here. 
Now this name appears in the namespace because if we look here we can see we have a function with that name and of course this function is an object in Python so we have a name to object mapping. This name appears in the namespace because of this program statement and this name appears in the namespace because of this program statement and this appears in the namespace because of this program statement and there you can see we have the sum underscore of underscore numbers here. So these four names are there because I have used those names in the code as you can see here. So let's consider this computer program again and I'm going to concentrate on this area of the program and the dictionary that's generated because of this area and the dictionary is shown here. And for this dictionary we have keys to values as we usually refer to the entries in a dictionary but when we're dealing with namespaces, we know we really should be talking about names to objects. So this lot are the names of the things I've used in the code. As you can see here, the name of the function, and these are the names of the variables that have appeared in the program. And these, well, these represent the objects that are bound to the names. So for example, this is the object, that's the object of the function, and of course, this is the name of the function. This name here is bound to this integer object that has the value five, and that's come from this program statement here. And of course, we can easily follow through this explanation for the other entries in the dictionary. So when this computer program executes this line is going to give us the following output and you can see we get the output of 12 as we would expect. Of course this program statement will display the namespace for this area of the computer program and I'm going to show that next but I'm going to take away the bits of the namespace that Python puts in. I'm just going to concentrate on the variable names and the name of the function that I've used in this computer program. So the bit I am interested in is this lot here and if you look at those you can see this is the name of the function as you can see here this is the first underscore number which is the name of this variable which is assigned five and we can see that entry in the dictionary here and then of course I could do the similar explanation for these two names which we can see appear here in the dictionary and how they are related to the objects here this is the screenshot of the computer program I've just discussed. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to move this program statement from this area of the program and I'm going to put it inside here, inside the function definition. And the code for that is shown here. And there you can see the program statement having been moved from this area. I've moved the computer program to the top left corner so we can see what the runtime is in the space below. So let's look to the runtime for this computer program and you can see it here. And what we're looking at is the namespace and the result of the runtime of the program outputting 12 for the addition of the 5 and the 7. So let's single step through the program. This program statement executes first, then this one, then this. Consequently, this will call this function. This function here will add up the 5 and the 7 that's been passed in, storing the result in the variable result. And this line is responsible for printing this. Now this is the namespace for this region of the program. It's the namespace for the function. Then of course the 12 is returned to here and this line then prints out the 12. I'm now going to show schematically the namespace for the function and you can see that shown here. It's a dictionary and we can see what we have here are the names and the names are bound to the appropriate objects here which in this case we can see are all instances of the integer class. If we look to this, that's the name of this parameter. This is the name of this parameter and this result is the name here of the variable that I use to hold the result of the addition of what's in number underscore one to number underscore two. So we can see that this namespace here is reflected schematically here. Of course, this namespace is the namespace for this function. A moment ago, on a previous slide, we looked at the namespace for this region of the code, and it was different. So here we're looking at what we mean by multiple namespaces. There's a namespace for the function, and there's a namespace for this region of the code. 
Now I've amended the program again so we can look at the namespace for the different regions of this computer program. And the amendment is shown here. I've simply put this line in to show us what the namespace is for this region of the code. So if I run this program, what we're going to see output is as you can see here. And of course, this line is responsible for outputting this namespace. And this line here is responsible for outputting this namespace. And of course, this 12 was output by this line. So I'm not really interested in the execution of the program for the addition of the numbers, I'm interested in looking at the namespaces. So to ensure I do that, I'm going to concentrate on the namespaces by blowing up the screenshot to a bigger size, as you can see here. And I'm going to remove those from view because I'm now interested in this namespace and this bit of the namespace. Now this is the namespace for this function and you can see it's number underscore one, number underscore two and result. And of course if we come here we can see that this bit of the program has this in its namespace which is the name of the function here. It has this which is this name of the variable in the program statement. It has this which appears here in the program, and it has this which appears here in the program. So what we're looking at is a namespace here and a namespace there, and therefore we have multiple namespaces. So if we had a computer program with 10 functions, and we had this region of the code responsible for invoking those functions, we'd have a namespace for each of the functions, and we'd have a namespace for this region of the code that called upon those functions. So in total, we would have 11 namespaces. So you can see we have multiple namespaces when we write Python programs. So let's consider this computer program again and let's look at it from the viewpoint of the namespaces appearing as dictionaries. And we can see for this area of the computer program we have a namespace set up in a dictionary like this. And you can see what we have here are the names and they appear in the code as shown here. And of course these are the instances of the classes that are related to those names that appear in the dictionary. If we look to this what we can see for it schematically is this dictionary and these are the names and those names relate to the names as they appear in the code here. And of course these are the objects that relate to those names. Now what we need to think about when we look at these dictionaries is their lifetime. How long do they exist? Well, when this function is called, this dictionary is created. And as soon as this function finishes its execution, this dictionary here, well, it disappears. Python removes it. How it removes it, don't worry about it. It removes it from the stack and the heap. But it removes it. And of course, when the program finishes executing, this dictionary here is also removed. So what we can see when we have a program with a region like this and a function, we have two different namespaces. Let's now consider this computer program and you can see we have a function and we have this region here. Now each of these areas will have their own namespace. For example, this will have a namespace and this here will have a namespace. Now as a computer program, as a human, we may look at this and say, oh, I've got a number underscore one here. I've got a number underscore one here. Are they the same thing? Oh, I've got a number underscore two and a number underscore two. Are they the same? Well, they're not. And how Python ensures that, whereas we may get confused, it doesn't get confused. It has a namespace for the function and it has a namespace for this region here. So let's have a look at the namespace for this schematically and we can see it here. And you can see this dictionary, this namespace has this, which is the name of this function. It has this, which is what is achieved when we execute this program statement. And this here is what we have when we execute this program statement. So this is the namespace for this area of the computer program. If we now look at the namespace for this schematically, it will look like this. Whereas this was the result of this program statement, this is the result of this program statement. And Python will know where it is executing at any instance in time. So if it's in this region, it knows it's dealing with this namespace. So it goes to here to get at this instance of the integer class. And if it wants to get at this 
variable it knows to go to this dictionary where it will see this and it will be able to get at that instance of the integer class. And when the execution is taking place in here, well it knows to go to this dictionary here, this namespace and this variable is this one here so it knows that it is mapped to this integer as it was assigned here as you can see on this line of the code. So what the namespaces enable Python to do is to distinguish between variables that have the same name when they appear in different parts of the program. Now software engineering practice should come into play here. You should avoid as a programmer naming variables the same like this. But of course when your program is very long you may find that this isn't possible because you forgot what you named your variables at some previous week when you were writing your code or you haven't read all the lines of code because somebody else has wrote most of the program and you're just adding bits to it. There are ways to avoid this happening which we'll discuss when we cover software engineering practice principles. But here we can see how Python ensures that it knows the distinction between the variables that just happen to have the same name in the code when they are representing different things. Now obviously this is a demo to point out this feature of namespaces in Python and it's a program that doesn't actually make any sense. I don't know what it does, well it doesn't do anything other than illustrate the fact that we have multiple namespaces in a Python program and that allows us to ensure that whereas we may get confused between variables that have the same name, Python will not. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.